Uh, hey everyone, this is Ramon Thomas from sunny South Africa. Uh, today I want to talk to you about um, something that I've been working on for a couple of years. Um, I grew up in a time before smartphones and Wi-Fi. Um, during the 1980s, I used to visit the public library and read books, comics and magazines. Some of my favorites include Asterix and Tintin. And getting a new copy of these books, I was so excited I started reading them while walking home. Uh, this was also a time before Uber. One of the people that inspired me all along is my aunt, Elizabeth Miller. She retired in 2009 as the head of the Utenegh Town Library. Utenegh is a small town, part of Nelson Mandela Bay Metro in the Eastern Cape of South Africa. Since that time, all the libraries in this area have been have no longer been open on Saturdays. The main reason is the local government refusing to pay overtime for the staff. And it's not clear to me whether all the libraries in South Africa are open on Saturdays or closed. Anyway, we can all agree that libraries are a safe environment for children to learn, to read, and sometimes to gain access to the internet. When libraries are closed, it prevents the local community from improving their literacy rates outside of school. I believe this fact violates the South African Bill of Rights, especially the right to education. With such high crime rates and unemployment among young people, we can hardly afford to keep libraries closed. They're the ideal place for adults and children to connect with each other. People can do research and they can um, have a quiet meeting place where they can discuss their ideas and whatever it is that is important to them and their local communities. So I encourage you to join me in petitioning the Premier of the Eastern Cape and the Mayor of Nelson Mandela Bay to reopen public libraries on Saturdays. Let me end off by just uh, reminding you of two quotes by Eastern Cape legends. Nelson Mandela said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. And the late Steve Biko said, the most potent weapon in the hands of the oppressor is the mind of the oppressed. So join me and don't allow government officials and politicians to continue to oppress us by keeping the libraries closed on Saturdays. We need them back open like they used to be for many, many years. Sign the petition, share it, and help me get the attention of these people who can actually do something about reopening them. The passport to a journey can begin between two covers. Market research has shown that while most young people in the country enjoy reading, Many are held back due to the cost of books or their lack of availability. South African Libraries Week coincides with the opening of the first library in South Africa in Cape Town on the 20th of March, 1818. The National Library of South Africa in Pretoria is the second biggest on the continent and houses over 3 million books. Deputy National Librarian Rachel Murray says efforts are constantly being made to make reading material available. This is a very popular place, especially for, for young for the young, we receive about 2,000 students every day who are using the library. Mm -hmm. And you can see, looking around, that we are sitting here and studying. And it is in line with, with the theme for the South African Library Week, Educate Yourself at the Library. South Africa has 23 academic libraries, 1,800 public or community libraries, book exchanges and mobile libraries. However, there is a struggle to encourage more young people to read for leisure. But this challenge has not been met without some effort. We started with the primary schools this year to encourage them to read. So we thought if we can start them while they are still young, it will benefit them because they will start reading at an early age. So when they are also teenagers, they will be familiar with reading and they will like reading because they are already readers by that time. Over the past three years, these facilities have begun to introduce digital integration throughout the country. Now what we did is we started to look at the rural libraries to say, 
let's look at uh, rural libraries first. Let's implement internet connectivity and uh, moving from rural libraries to, to the urban centers, that is the urban uh, libraries. We needed to keep all these libraries, that is to make them uh, uh, move to the same level, to be at the same level. So we looked at that and said, okay, let's put all these libraries at uh, one megabits per second. But even more in a digital age, most library goers know that libraries are more than centers for information. It's very important, I mean, especially for someone who's studying, you know, obviously ease of reference in terms of the work that you do. And I mean, I'm also a mother who's got a 12-year-old who happens to be a media center, uh, media center prefect at school. They help us a lot in making sure that uh, we get the relevant information on how can we relate to our studies. I think that is the most important, the importance of the libraries. Okay, this is uh, part two to the same video, and I just want to give you some additional background. Uh, the Nelson Mandela Bay Metro's library service is made up of over 20 libraries in the former cities of Port Elizabeth, the towns of Dispatch, and Newtonag. The libraries are situated in Algoa Park, Allen Ridge Center, Boyson Park, Kichati, Dispatch, Galvindale, Kwadwesi, Kwamagaki, Kwanabushle, Linton Grange, the center of town in Port Elizabeth, the main library, which is currently closed and under construction or under renovation, Motherwell, Newton Park, North End, Warmer, West End, the Utenek Town Center, and Zwedi. In addition, there are three modular libraries, um, which will be opening the doors to the public very soon. Uh, in June 2017, uh, the mayor, Athol Trollip, uh, opened a new library in Kleberga. All these libraries provide lending and reference books and photocopy as well as faxing services. Um, I remember last year, now in 2016, um, the Minister uh, of uh, Post and Telecommunications uh, opened uh, the free Wi-Fi services at all the public libraries in Nelson Mandela Bay. So you can now also get access to the internet freely uh, when you visit these uh, libraries. Specialized research facilities are also available. The Red Location Library is a digital library which has as its main objective documenting the history of apartheid in South Africa with further information on colonialism and the liberation struggle worldwide. Although, although, the, library, although the library is not yet open to the public, a number of books on the topic are available in the e-media library via the Metro's website. The Africana Library, housed within the main library building, concentrates on the social and cultural history of the metro area in particular and the Eastern Cape in general. As I mentioned before, the library, the main library in Port Elizabeth is currently closed for renovations. The contact numbers of the libraries are available on the service directory on the website. I encourage you to please contact your local, local library and ask them why they are closed on Saturdays and when they will reopen. I also encourage you to reach out to your ward councillors and demand that they find out why the libraries are closed on Saturdays. And I really need your help to uh, sign and share this petition so we can get to the attention of the Mayor of Nelson Mandela Bay as well as the Premier of the Eastern Cape. I'm sure that if you agree on the importance of literacy, reading and the value of education that uh, you won't hesitate in supporting this petition.
Now, where are the people who want to access libraries don't have to walk or take public transport into another community or another ward to go and access a library. So, accessibility of libraries is fundamentally important because these young children can simply walk to this facility and I was encouraging them to make use of the facility. And the other important thing was the lady who opened the uh, event with prayer this morning, she encouraged the community not to vandalize the, the facility. Now, I'm convinced that this community will look after this facility because parents understand how important it is for children to broaden their horizons through learning and acquiring knowledge. So I was counting on the parents and the teachers encouraging their children to go and make use of this wonderful facility right here in the community of Auburn.